Hello everyone, this is the first video of A2 Biology Chapter 1, Energy and Respiration. In this video, I will first outline the need for energy by giving examples of a cellular process that needs uh, energy. And second, I will describe the features of ATP, the structural features and the physical features of ATP that makes the ATP a very suitable molecule for universal energy currency. We know that all living organisms need a continuous supply of energy to stay alive and we've been learning this since the primary school and that's the reason why we eat food to supply energy for our body. At A-level biology, you cannot just explain the need for energy just to stay alive or to survive. You have to give specific forms of work at cellular level. Here is a list of different forms of work that require energy. I've taken these from marking scheme. Protein synthesis. DNA replication, active transport, remember active transport from AS biology, mechanical work such as the muscle contraction and the movement of cilia, nerve impulse transmission, the body temperature, bioluminescence, and electrical discharge in some animals also need energy. Let's recall the term respiration. In its simplest definition, respiration means the release of energy from food with a series of chemical reactions. Well, theoretically, the energy that is released during the steps of respiration can be directly harnessed to do some form of work in the cell. However, a much more flexible system occurs in which energy yielding reactions in all organisms are used to produce an intermediate molecule. This intermediate molecule is called as ATP. For that reason, we call the ATP as the energy currency in the cell. ATP molecules are like the batteries. Wherever they are needed in the cell, they're transported there. Keep this in mind, this is very important. Energy is not produced. This would be a wrong way of expressing it, since energy can neither be produced nor be destroyed. You need to use the term released. Even though they may sound same to you, but they're technically not the same. Energy being produced is wrong. So prefer writing energies released, otherwise your answer will be rejected. Okay, let's examine the structure of the ATP molecule. First of all, what does ATP stand for? ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Actually, the name describes its structure. Remember from AS biology, ATP is a nucleotide. Like all nucleotides, ATP has three parts. Sugar, in this case, it's the pentose sugar, 5-carbon sugar, phosphate, and nitrogen base. Remember the bases adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine, and uracil from DNA and RNA. So adenine and pentose sugar together called as adenosine. And this of the name, adenosine triphosphate. So all nucleotides have a phosphate, but ATP has three phosphate. So that's the tri, monophosphate, diphosphate, and triphosphate. So during steps of respiration, when energy is released, the energy is stored in the chemical bond in between the phosphates. When the ATP molecule loses one phosphate, energy is released out. So when the, one of the phosphates is broken, energy is released. When another phosphate is broken, energy is released. So how does ATP serve as energy currency? When one of the phosphate molecules is, is broken off, energy is released. Right? and ADP is formed. When the other phosphate is broken, energy is also released, and AMP, adenosine is monophosphate, so that's di, and this is monophosphate. So basically during respiration, when energy is released in one of the steps, the energy is stored in the bond between the phosphate molecules in ATP molecule. ATP is then used by the cell in all forms of work. Once ATP is hydrolyzed or broken down, energy is released. Remaining ADP molecules stay in the cell and whenever energy is available to them by means of uh, steps of respiration, the ATP is regenerated. So this reaction is reversible. So what makes ATP a highly suited molecule for its job? First of all, ATP is small. Being small lets the ATP molecule easily travel, diffuse, ATP is water soluble. This is essential for, for a molecule that needs to be transferred from one part of the cell to another part of the cell since it's in cytoplasm, aqueous environment. 
Well, ATP is easily transported and it diffuses very rapidly. Well, that's the result of being small and water soluble actually. When one of the phosphate of ATP is hydrolyzed, it releases energy. 30.5 kilojoules per molecule of ATP. Let's check out a question from June 2003. Describe the importance of ATP in cells, giving two examples of processes in which it's used. First, check out how many marks the question is. Three marks. So you need to provide three key pieces of information. First, from the importance of ATP, one mark, and two examples. That will make totally three. So what's the importance of ATP? Very simple. ATP provides energy. And you can provide any of the two examples of forms of work that we listed in the beginning of this video, such as protein synthesis, DNA replication, active transport, muscle contraction, uh, the transmission of the nerve impulses, anything, any of the two. Figure 1-1 one one shows the molecular structure of ATP. Describe the main structural features of the molecule. ATP has three parts. 1. Pentose sugar. Here is the pentose sugar. Nitrogenous base. Here is the nitrogenous base. And phosphate group. And there are three phosphate in ATP. Explain how ATP is able to transfer energy in cells, or in, in other words, what makes ATP a highly suitable molecule. Well, ATP is synthesized from ADP with an organic phosphate. ATP is a soluble molecule. It's water soluble. It rapidly diffuses, easily transported, and one, one of the phosphate is hydrolyzed or broken down. 30.5 kilojoules of energy is released. Right, any of these three will suffice. That's all for this video.